Right, so I have finished the horizontal stabilizer uh, and moved it in the house. It's now sitting on the dining room table, annoying my wife with her presence and reminding her every day that I am building an airplane in the garage. Um, I'm moving on to the horizontal stabilizers and I've already done some of the stuff on it. I didn't film it because I'm not always in the mood to film things. In any case, I have uh, put some nut plates on this thing. I've kind of assembled this tip rib structure. I don't know what it is for both the left and right hand side. And also uh, riveted some um, reinforcements, hinge reinforcements plates on the uh, front spars for the horizontal stabilizer. Tonight, what I'm going to film and just kind of do a video montage of is me dimpling the skins and then uh, kind of back riveting some of these half ribs. I don't know what they're called. Half ribs, I guess, onto the horizontal stabilizer skins. I think I can get to all that tonight. Um, so I'm going to kind of do a little bit of video montage of me doing this work um, as well as some of the back riveting and then at the end uh, maybe explain or do a little quick video on what back riveting is. Normally when you're doing riveting like with the bucking bar you have the rivet gun on what's called the manufactured head and you have a bucking bar on the, uh, the other side and it kind of forms a shop head. Back riveting's different um, and I've only done it on practice kits so far uh, and practice kind of sheets of metal that I've just put together of, of my own volition. Um, so basically what you do is a back rivet, you just have a basically big steel metal plate. You kind of put the manufactured head, the flush side on top of that plate, and then you have a set that will hit and kind of form the shop head. And you actually are hitting the shop head with the rivet gun directly. Um, it makes actually pretty nice rivets. You don't kind of ding up the skin the way you do a little bit, at least seems to do with um, uh, using a normal rivet gun because you're not banging away on the outside part of the skin. Um, and there's kind of this spring-loaded thing on the rivet set that keeps the rivet flush with the skin. So it should be look really nice. I'm kind of looking forward to see how it turns out. Anyway, so I'm going to get to it now. I've got uh, a couple, uh, four uh, top skins to uh, uh, dimple. Um, I've already put dimples in these kind of half ribs that I'm going to back rivet. So I'm going to dimple the skins and then get on the back riveting. So here we go. done this on any of my actual airplane parts, but I have done it in practice. Um, in fact, I practiced quite a bit on it, and every time I would uh, hit the uh, shop head um, with the rivet gun, it, the rivet tail would lean, um, and there was nothing I could do about it. It just kept leaning. Uh, so one of the things I did after searching the forms was rather than having an airflow restrictor on the rivet gun, I tried putting a mini airflow or air regulator, and I found that when I dial it into about 30 psi for the uh, 330 seconds rivets, it makes, it doesn't lean anymore, for whatever reason, rivet gun magic, I don't know. Um, and I can do very consistent rivets very, very quickly. Also, the, manufacturer, the uh, manufactured head side, the flush side, looks absolutely beautiful. So last time when I was uh, talking about uh, how I was happy with how the horizontal stabilizer turned out, uh, based on what I've seen on my practice sheets, the uh, <laughs> manufactured side looks really, really nice. And now I look at my horizontal stabilizer and the rivets I set with the rivet gun and I just kind of cringe. Um, I'm not sure, well, maybe I just sucked at riveting, maybe that's how it's supposed to look, I don't know. Regardless, I'm going to uh, uh, back rivet these suckers in and let's see how it goes.
on some of these larger half ribs, I, have, I can't get this last rivet with the back rivet, uh, or with the rivet gun, um, not directly, because this thing is in the way. So what I've decided to do instead is I can use like a paint stick, something like this, and then my tungsten uh, uh, bucking bar, kind of put it on top of it like that, then hit it with the rivet gun. I've dialed the sucker up to about 60 PSI, and I think this should work. Um, I don't think it's going to be as nice as using the back rivet set, but what do you do? Anyway, let's give it a shot. Well, that really bounces around. Turn it down just a little bit. Try 50 PSI. It's a little bit better. Oh yeah, it needs a lot more. Okay, close, that's pretty good. And perfect, I can tell. <clears throat> all right, so now I just need to do that to the, uh, all the rest of the rivets and I'll be done. finished putting together the horizontal stabilizers. Well, mostly. Um, I still need to put together the trailing edge, um, which involves pro sealing it, basically sticking a kind of glue on it and some other things to help keep it straight. But I'm gonna do that a little bit later. Um, I have to kind of do some similar things on the, uh, for the trim tabs. In any case, this turned out really, really nice. Um, in fact, I learned a lot about riveting, a lot more about riveting on this. Turns out my rivet gun, the PSI was a little too high and uh, on, on uh, when I did these, I turned the pressure down quite a bit using a regulator and um, the results are a lot, lot better. And now I look at the horizontal stabilizer and think, oh no, uh, it looks a little bit more beat up than I'd like. So maybe I'll rebuild that. Uh, regardless, I'm done with the uh, uh, elevators for now 
and uh, I'm going to move on to building the tail comb. Anyway, that'll be the next video.